Hey everybody, Courtney here with Smitty's Fly Box. We're just going to be going over our intermediate fly for the month of November. Pretty excited about this pattern. This is a tail light caddis um, jig nymph that we're going to be doing. I've been fishing with this um, for just throughout this year quite extensively. I've been trying it out and finally feel pretty good about putting it in the box and letting you guys try it out as well. Um, this is tied on an Ori Ensign uh, wide gap jig hook. This is a size 10. And I've got my slotted tungsten bead on there and some a few lead wraps to add a little bit of extra weight here. So we'll just go ahead and jump in and get started with this guy. After you anchor your thread to your hook, I tie in this midge cactus chenille right towards the back end of the fly. It's actually going to go into the bend just a little bit. So we have a little bit of a tail, um, hence the name tail light kind of comes out here with these bright colors of cactus chenille. And we're just going to do three or four wraps slightly into the bend of the hook with this cactus chenille and I'm going to bring it up to just before um, where the uh, point of the hook would be even with um, where my thread was hanging from. So I'll anchor that down and then I'll trim out my excess here. And you can do this in a bunch of different colors. There's a lot of different midge cactus uh, chenille colors out there. This green is by far my favorite uh, but I also like it in pink and the rust color that you also got in your box and uh, reds and purples too. So now we're just going to basically build this up, kind of like a hair's ear nymph here. We're going to tie in our flashaboo ribbing, just gold flashaboo, um, or you could use like a size 18 flash rib on there. And then we use the hair's ear dubbing, and Adam's gray is the color, and I really like this color variation of it. It's a little darker than your natural hair's ear, and I think it just kind of makes that chartreuse tail pop a little bit more. You could use natural hair's ear too, it would work just fine. Um, and then you can obviously use a bunch of different colors of hair's ear here. So when I'm winding this hair's ear dubbing on, I want it to be thicker than the diameter of the chenille. And that's kind of the trick with this as I wrap this on here. You'll see that I like to have a thicker body so that the um, hair's ear is, is dubbed on thicker than what that chenille diameter is. So you don't end up with a funny little bump um, of chenille and then a flat spot of, of dubbing. Okay, and so then from here, basically all we're going to do is just wrap that tinsel up through the fly, just like we would a hair's ear. We're just going to rib this fly. And I just like to make even spiral wraps just up through right up to against the bead. And then we can anchor that flash down and make sure that's tied in nice and tight. And then trim out our excess. And then I like to brush out the dubbing a little bit just to add a little bit of movement to the fly, get that hair's ear dubbing to kind of flow back and it kind of encases that chenille portion a little bit, kind of make it look more like a kind of like a peaking caddis type looking bug. Um, but I like to brush that out and then add a few more good wraps around to make sure that that tinsel is secure. And then from here we're going to tie in our CDC and I've prepped this feather here. I've just cut the tip of the feather off and I'm going to tie that tip down right against on top of the hook. And I'll just trim out my excess. And now from here I'll just simply just fold those fibers back and then I'll just rotate this feather around. And I just try to keep that feather one wrap on top of the next. And just make sure you're preening those feathers back. You could use a CDC clip if you wanted to do that. You'd not necessary here. I think you can wrap this just like a, a hackle, just palmer it. And then bring your thread up and through. Notice I only did about two or three turns of that CDC. And we'll anchor that CDC down nice and tight so it doesn't slip out on us. I'll trim out the excess and then as always with any type of, of hackle um, I like to kind of pull this back and tie it down so it naturally will lay back and flow backwards and the CDC obviously when it's wet it'll encase that whole fly it looks really good and then from here I'm just going to add a little bit more dubbing just to kind of uh, cover up the collar there and that'll also help to aid with laying down the CDC and then this fly is pretty much done and I'm excited for you guys to fish it and let us know how you do with it uh, so we can see different photos and uh, fish you guys catch with it it's been a fish producer for us here um, caught some pretty nice browns on it this year and some a bunch of rainbows and cutthroats on our local water so give it a shot and let us know how you do with it.